Hi everyone, my name is Robert and since yesterday I'm eight years old. So I can't... <laughs> so I can't tell you too much about life at eight years old, but the first day of it has been amazing since I've got the opportunity to be on this stage. I love challenges and I am trying to find solutions for a better world. But my dad thinks that I should start with cleaning my own bedroom. Three years ago, I was just a normal kid, going to school in the morning and then going to a lot of activities that I loved. Martial arts, swimming, guitar, piano, drums, tennis, ski, ice skating, drum classes, horse riding and climbing. This was my evening shift. But as much as I wanted to learn these activities, I was all always on the rush and tired. Besides, it was very weird because my mum kept saying that evenings are for playing and family. So I began to think, is my piano teacher part of my family or something? I mean, if this was childhood, I was better off as an adult. At least I could re relax in the evenings and I would have money, like adults do. Well, some of them at least. What's the advantages of being a child if not having time to play every day? Childhood was supposed to be a time of joy when I could read as much as I wanted make experiments for a whole day, build Lego and robots, play drums, climb mountains, and invent things for a better planet. Well, after I was cleaning my bedroom, of course. So, no time for playing, not too much family time, but the first part of the day was even worse. I should tell you first that, that ever since my brother and I were very li little, Mum has been teaching us many things through, through play. So, I knew the whole alphabet at two, two years old. At three, I could read basic words. And when my colleagues were still learning letters at five, I was reading Roald Dahl and Enid Blyton. I learned times table at five when my colleagues were still learning to count to a hundred. So many times in school, my mind was running away somewhere else. I used to think about things like, could we create a spaceship that travels faster than light? Or are black holes time traveling gates? Or, what is our real weight if we take away the gravitational force? My mind was trying to keep itself busy, but giftedness is a blessing and a curse. As wonderful as it may sound to have a fast brain and make many connections, I felt trapped. I was constantly in another world, outside the one I was expected to live in. I was doing in my mind all the sorts of things that I wanted to do in real life. But in reality, I had to sit with other 30 children in the same room, doing the same things, no matter which were our talents, our learning styles, our rhythms, or our dreams. I felt so bored and I couldn't choose what to learn, how, or for how long. It didn't matter if my brain was hungry for chemistry and I cared less about what a verb was. Everybody seemed to know what was best for me. My parents, my teachers, and above all, the government. 
We were all supposed to learn times table at seven, periodic table at 12, and then we would all get to be some happy and rich adults. The school curriculum knew exactly what lessons I should take, when I should start or stop learning, what books I should read, or what exams I should take, but had no idea that my mission on earth is different than anyone else's and that I needed a unique approach for that. I felt like a prisoner and I was dreaming about a free life where I could work for days on an invention or mix chemical substances to see what happens. Don't get me wrong, my teachers were great, but they couldn't possibly have the time to explain to each of us individually according to our levels or to teach us what we wanted to learn. I wanted to learn about the structure of water, about what's inside a phone, why snow is white, why carbon dioxide is harmful for us when it has two oxygens, when does a star die, or whether we can make trees grow faster. But I had to read teddy bear stories and count apples instead. I had a few friends, all of them older than me, but I had none in my class. So for a while, I wished to be like everyone else, and maybe I would have been happier. My colleagues were nice to me, as I used to help them with reading and maths, but I wanted someone who could talk about stars, robots, or the law of attraction, not just video games and cartoons. I felt trapped and voiceless, so I became depressed. I was feeling like inside of an aquarium in the middle of the sea, and I wanted to swim in the sea. I had to do things that I had no control over, while I could have done so many other things that I wanted to. I totally hated homework, as it was baby work, and even if it was only one homework a week, I felt like it was wasting my time, time that I could have used for science. I remember saying to my mum that I cannot wait for the holidays so that I would actually learn something and that I wished I could learn at home. She said that there's no such thing and that there was no way I could skip school. My idea of learning was just a dream and I began to cry every morning before going to school. My parents became really worried and started reading about families who were bringing tutors at home for their children or about families that had to travel a lot and their children were learning at home. They discovered that over 80,000 kids in UK were doing what was called homeschooling, but it seemed so out of my parents' comfort zone. School had always been very important in my family. No one in my family has ever been homeschooled. And most people in my family went to university. Even my grandma is an engineer. But not literally going to school would have been for them the equivalent of not getting an education. I could see their confusion and despair. And I really, really tried to like school. But teddy bear stories and boredom didn't let me live. Then my mum had a talk with the teacher and she said that I might be gifted. She recognised some of the signs, like being bored in school. I couldn't stand repetition. I was very emotional, crying for trees being cut and plastic in the oceans. I had good memory. I was academically ahead and I had good memory and intense curiosity and concentration. Then she found Mensa, the largest and oldest IQ society in the world that takes the top 2% of the population as members. I then went for the test which took three hours and was not easy but it was really challenging and I totally enjoyed it. 
My mum was crying when they informed my parents of my results and my dad said that I would not go to school anymore. This is how I became a Mensa member at five years old. This was the point This was the point when my parents knew for sure they had to change something. They knew that keeping me in school would reduce my rhythm and that I might not reach my potential. So for the next three months, they tried to find a different approach to education and they discovered, understood and started to love the idea of homeschooling. They read about famous people who at some point in their lives were home educated. Leonardo da Vinci, Mozart, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, or Princess Diana. Also, if Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Brad Pitt, or Will Smith have home educated their kids, that was enough to convince my mum. My parents bought all the manuals on the market just to make sure that they will not miss an experiment or a word. They hunted on Facebook the home educated groups from all around the world and they even wrote to universities to make sure that they'll accept home educated kids. Then they transformed the house into a school. We have a times table poster in the bathroom so that no time would be wasted. This is our wardrobe and watch for our placemats. My life has finally changed. For two years now, I can do whatever I like if it's about learning, including playing as our playing is learning. Lego is learning, riding a horse is learning, climbing a tree is learning, making a mess in the house is learning as we learn to put everything back after. I have days when I put on my alarm at six o'clock in the morning as I'm desperate to do robotics or build something. Or I can sleep until 10 o'clock if I couldn't let the book off my hands the night before and I need more sleep. We can travel any time now as we do not depend on school holidays. It's much cheaper and Paris is so less crowded in November. I also don't wait for holidays anymore, as you only wait for a holiday when you don't like school. Actually, I'm on holiday and at school, at the same time, all the time. My, my brother joined me and starting this January, we're both enjoying this adventure now. We became more responsible for our schedule and we know that if we do not follow it, we cannot get away if we copy or cheat. You cannot cheat mum, believe me. But most of the time, we learn because we like it. I mean, we can choose between things like reading, playing board games, going on the trampoline in our garden, playing instruments in our mini studio, cooking with grandma, doing science experiments in our mini lab, or playing with Lego in our garden house. Also, I'm not learning for any tests, exams, for my teacher or for my parents. I'm learning for myself. I can spend six hours a day reading Narnia, and the next day I can do experiments the whole day. I can now choose to spend my time pursuing my passions, no matter what they are. I meet hundreds of kids every month and I finally have friends. There are over 80,000 homeschool kids at the moment in the UK and we have local meetings that we attend. We have classes together, parties and even not going back to school picnic. Academically, I am three years ahead in math, seven years ahead in reading, and I read chemistry and physics books for high school level. But I am not interested in passing any exams right now as it would spoil all my pleasure for learning. Besides, the real learning is outside the house. 
I learned a lot of history from museums, astronomy at the planetarium, I climb mountains, I ride horses, I attend first day trainings at St. John Ambulance, I go to Beavers, I train for an international music and theatre festival, I go swimming, taekwondo, kickboxing, ice skating, skiing, that's my favourite. I go to robotics, Inventix, science club. I play piano, drums and guitar. And I have time for playing and family. Actually, one of the reasons why my dad liked homeschooling is because he thought we would actually stay home. Home schooling. You know, staying safe in the house doing six hours of math each day. But when he called us during the day, we were hiking, doing a fire camp, or picking mushrooms in some forest that mum cannot explain you where it is on the map. So we should probably call it road schooling or out of the house schooling. Ever since I became home educated, I've discovered my passions. My biggest one now is robotics, and after a world educational robotics trial and a lot of training, I won a place at the International Robotics Contest held in Shanghai in December, and I keep training hard for China. Oh, sorry. I also spend a lot of time thinking and working on new inventions. And in February 2020, I will be participating in the UK Invention Convention with my first invention, which is a camping table for soil and sand with special legs system. Maybe homeschooling is not for everyone, but I keep thinking, when did I ever have time for school? Most of my schedule is different than the schedule of most kids my age. But now I know that being myself means being different and that in order to be happy, I need a different schedule. I've been unhappy for long, but now I am grateful to my parents for thinking outside the box and I am so amazed by the possibilities my new life has offered me. I am finally happy doing what I like according to my talents, my needs, and my potential. If you ever feel trapped and voices around you are too loud, remember that you are the only one who can hear your voice and follow it. This is my story, and this is how I have finally found my voice, outside the system and inside my heart. For more to make she fits the fairies. Thank <laughs> you.